And I feel like they, uh, you're always a feature on the UK card, so does this one even feel any different because we're a bit closer to home, or is this just, hey, another UFC London just in a different place? No, yeah, you're right. It's, um, we're in the north now, you know what I mean? We're not down south. Uh, it's on a four-hour drive away. It's a 40-minute drive from my house. So, yeah, we're, we're back in the north, which is nice. And I can't wait to blow the roof off this new arena. Yeah. You know, obviously you're fighting Bobby or King Green now. Um, what are your thoughts on the name change? I know you said that you won't be calling him that, but do you think that just kind of speaks to how quirky a character he is in general, or do you think it's a weird thing? What do you make of the whole thing itself? Oh, it shows what a dickhead he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, imagine being nearly 40 years of age and changing your name to King. It's, it's embarrassing, lad. You know what I mean? Grow up in it. Like, as I've said in other interviews, CTE is real. You've, uh, I feel like every time they put a test in front of you and you, you pass it, the fans kind of want to change the, how important that test was after the fact. Do you think that Bobby or, or King will prove to the fans that you're actually a legitimate lightweight and something that can climb the rankings because he is still active and he is still winning fights? No, no matter what. Until I get the belt, people are going to doubt me. People are going to say, ah, oh, this and that. Like, as I said, my last fight with Tony was a lose-lose. Um, if I would have lost it would have been I being beat by a washed up Tony, I dominated the fight, but I only beat a washed up Tony and I couldn't even finish him, you know what I mean? Which it's mad. You know, it's like as I say, I can't win. Obviously I just get on with it because I can't wait to prove people wrong here though with I've, I've always seen oh you'll never be ranked, he's not good enough to be ranked. And when I win this fight on Saturday night, I'm gonna be ranked. But as I say, um, even in my comments now, it's like, oh, the UFC are giving him another has been. Like, I can't win, lad, no matter what. In an interview with Sky Sports, you said that uh, a few weeks ago your coaches were talking about pulling you out of this fight because you weren't in the mental space to take the fight. Did you know during that time that you weren't feeling it, or did when they have to tell you, hey, we don't think you're feeling it, that's when you started to realise? No, it was a bit of both. You know what I mean? I knew there was stuff going on externally stuff going on in my head and obviously when Paul said it to me I was upset, I was not happy with him, I was angry but obviously he's my coach lad and he's like my second dad and he's only looking out for my best interest but since that moment like, I've had one of the best camps I've ever had a couple of weeks out, like as I say four, five, six weeks out I was thinking oh my god this is the worst camp of my life and I'm going into me arguably my toughest fight but then the last couple of weeks has just been like quality and looking forward to getting in the octagon again and beating this idiot up. You know, I think everyone appreciates that you are open about this subject, right? But doing it at this point of fight week, you know, now that everyone, including me, is going to ask you about it, you're almost inviting pressure onto yourself by even being this open about it. Is it just something that you feel like you have to do or is it something that helps you actually talking about it? Yeah, obviously getting it off my chest helps. But, like it was Ricky's anniversary two days ago, you know what I mean? So, been thinking about it a lot more. And it's been bad again lately. Another lad in Liverpool killed himself a couple of weeks ago. Young MMA fighter Conor Richards killed himself like three week, three months ago. And he was younger than me, you know what I mean? So, I just feel like it's something that needs talking about. And I'll be honest, lads, seeing Sky Sports put that interview up and some of the responses to it are fucking disgusting, lad. Like, people saying I'm just doing it for a PR stunt. Like, why, why would I invite pressure on myself like that for a PR stunt? You know what I mean? It's, it's mad. Like, people saying I'm only doing it for, for that reason when I know several people who've killed themselves and I've, I've thought about it in the past. So, why would I bring that sort of pressure on myself? But, again, I do it because I feel like I need to and then I don't want more people to kill themselves. Especially men, they just don't talk to people and kill themselves. But like some of the responses to me saying that are like, well, oh, just kill yourself then. You might as well kill yourself. That's what some of the responses have been, lad. And other people have been like quoting them and putting, no wonder men don't talk when the responses are like this. Like one of the ones that's probably pissed me off is fucking that video, people saying I'm bullying people in the pub. People saying, oh, he's a pisshead, he's on the aisle and he's bullying people in the pub, coked up. It's like, 
Oh, there was two weeks out from a fight, lad. Do you think I had a drink? I had a diet Red Bull and a fucking water. You know what I mean? And all them people that I'm, I'm with are my mates. I went to school with them all, I grew up with them all, they're all coming to fight on Saturday. And they all jumped on me ten minutes earlier when Cole Palmer scored and celebrated on me. So when my bet come in and I got a last minute winner, lad, I celebrated on them. That's just how the world works, lad. Going back to uh, King for now, uh, you said that he's, he sort of could be your toughest opponent. Do you think he is? Um, well, I think Jared Gordon is still my toughest opponent. Jared Gordon is so underrated that it's unbelievable. Even I underestimated him going into that fight, I'm not going to lie. Thought I was going to run through him. And then when I injured my foot in the first round, it was a completely different ball game. It was my toughest fight to date. Everyone in here probably still thinks I lost that fight. You know what I mean? It was when I watched it back, it was a very, very, very close fight. But I still think I won when you watch it without commentary. I can understand why people think I lost when you watch it with commentary. But Jared was a very tough fight, and I think Jared was beating Bobby up until the point when he decided to be a ram and flying headbutt him. So, yeah, like Jared or Bobby are my toughest fight, definitely. You obviously had some beef with Jordan Levitt, we all remember the teabagging incident, then at the press conference with Tony, you went back and forth with him. Where does Bobby or King rank on the beef uh, list for you? Yeah, probably higher than them all, because two and a half years ago, when I was sitting with my wife at a, at a show, at a UFC event, he was video on the back of my head talking about me, when I probably didn't even know who he was at the time, you <laughs> know what I mean? And he was sitting there video on the back of my head talking about me. And then he's trying to come out and say, oh, you mentioned me, Perry, you talk about me. No, you was talking about me two and a half years ago, lad. You know what I mean? So don't try and spin the narrative now when you've been wanking over fighting me for two and a half years. Going off of that, uh, I think your phrase was, let's see if he has the balls to grapple me. Um, do you think he actually will try to shoot on you or do you think he's, you know? No, that? he knows better. But the funny thing about that again was people saying, Oh, he's scared to strike with him. That's why he's saying this. He's scared to strike. And now I'm gonna come out and try and take his head off his fucking shoulders. But he he done an Insta story saying anyone can knock anyone out with a lucky punch. But you think you can do something what no one in the UFC has done? Uh, let's find out and all that. And I was like, sad. If you wanna find out, hit the deck and grapple with me. Let's see what happens. Because I know I'll drown. Uh, you also mentioned you don't think people give you the credit until you get the belt, but you also, you know, revealed your contract situation is almost up with UFC. So does that mean fans can maybe expect you to in the UFC some more if your goal is still the UFC belt? Uh, why would I leave the UFC? I mean, that got talked so much out of context. Yeah. Like every and I do, every single thing I do, people spin a narrative on it and change it. You know what I mean? I can't go for this shit without people talking about it, lad, and spinning it, saying all this shit on someone's face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not an I do can not be spun out of context, lad. Like, I said, what I said in the interview was, obviously, the UFC, I'm gonna get a new contract, but if I got offered millions to box some dickhead YouTuber, then I'd do it. Who wouldn't for prize fighters? But yeah, my contract's already getting negotiated. Like, the, the, as if the UFC are just gonna let me go, lad. They're just fucking messing. Joe here for Title Sports Network. Ask and you shall receive. Paddy, those are in shorts are finally here. Yeah, finally here, lad. Know what I mean? Um, I was slightly pissed off a couple of weeks ago when I got the call from my manager saying, um, Bobby's picked red. I can't have red. It's like, what? What's going on here? Know what I mean? I don't want to wear white or black. I want to wear red. You can fuck off. I even said to him, tell them I'm Dutch, so I can wear orange shorts, but it ended up working out alright in the long run, lad, he, he can wear red all he wants. Over the years, lad, when I fought on Cage Warriors, I, I, I lost when I wore red twice, and as I said before, people think I lost the Jared Gordon fight in red, people think uh, the Tony fight was close in red somehow, <laughs> so I'm glad to be getting orange back, you know what I mean, I think. I think I want to get a nice finish in it like I used to do on Cage Warriors. Paddy, when you look at Bobby's fighting style, 
he's got very crisp boxing, but he likes to drop his hands, and we've seen him receive some bad knockouts due to that. Is that why you're so confident that you'll get a knockout against Bobby Green? Yeah, I think he's underestimating me strike and he's underestimating me power a lot. Like, I'll be honest, I didn't believe in my own power until like the, the last few months. Like, my boxing coach Chris, my coaches in the gym, Ellis, Paul, Adam, they've like said to me, and even my sparring partners and that have said to me like recently, lad, you, you don't realise how hard you're And the fact that he got knocked out last year, I think twice, or Dober might have been the year before, but Dober knocked him out. And then that terrible stoppage against Jalen Turner, where he took so many unnecessary strikes. Uh, I just think he's chinny, you know what I mean? Like, he come back and he beat Jim Miller, yeah. Jim Miller's a grappler, and Jim Miller rocked him in the first round. So, I know for a fact that I put a hand on his chin, or a shin on his chin, that he's, he's not going to get up at. He's going to be stiff as a board. You were discussing those mental health struggles, and in terms of when you're going through a tough time, just talk about how much you value that support network that you have around you, your wife, your teammates, your family, helping you through those times. Yeah, I've said before, lad, and I wouldn't still be here if it wasn't for my wife. Without Laura, lad, I would have, I would have took my life a long time ago. But with her, with my family, with my team, my mates, only me. Like, where did that interview come out yesterday or today? I've had about six messages off my mates or my, my boys who I grew up with. Like, lad, you're all right, you're all right. But as I said in that, it, I feel good again now, you know what I mean? I feel great again. A couple of weeks ago, I was getting in touch with Jane, who works at James's place, which is like mental health for men where you go and speak. I was getting in contact with her to have a chat with her, you know what I mean? Just try and, try and get through it. And as I say, I did, got through it, and lad, I'm ready for anything now, lad. And I know. Renato Mercado was someone that you wanted to fight. He's now matched up with Benoit Saint Denis. What do you make of that fight, and are you looking for the winner of that one? Uh, yeah, like to be honest, whether Renato wins or loses, I'd still fight him. Like I think it'll be one of the funniest build-ups to a fight ever. I think he's hilarious, and I think a season of the Ultimate Fighter, me and him as coaches, would be absolutely fantastic. I think everyone would love to see that. He, he's a proper character lad, and. Yeah, I'd love to fight Moicano. I'll be honest, I actually, at, at the end, Benoit Saint Denis, about six months ago, asking did he want to come over to England and get some training in. I'd go over to Paris and get some training with him because it's, it's not far, you know I mean? it's only a quick flight and it'll bring both of our games on a lot. That's a look on Saturday. Just two one o'clock right here. Yeah, you weren't happy when he got put in on before, <laughs> was you? Wasn't happy, lad. It just caught me off guard. Um, I don't know if you saw, but on November first, uh, they're gonna do some rule changes. That oh yeah, they should. Twelve to six elbows yeah. should be legal anyway. You know what I mean? It's, I've always said that it's a stupid rule. Shouldn't shouldn't be like shouldn't get disqualified for a twelve to six elbow. You know what I mean? I'm one of them that says John Jones is unbeaten. Yeah. So you think John Jones should appeal and try to... Oh, I think him. he will appeal and that, that loss will be gone. You know what I mean? He definitely will appeal and that loss will be gone. And also, aren't they changing until we just have a hand down if so you need him yet still? You need at least another part of your body to be uh, downed upon. So like an elbow or shoulder and knee. It can't just be... It can't just hand. be your hand. Yeah. yeah. I've used that to my advantage before. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. I've just put a hand down so I can't get need. But I completely understand it. it I think it is... It should be like that. It really should. I'm, I'm with it. I, I'd, I'd be game for knees to a grounded opponent, lad. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I'd be game for that. Like, not stomps, but I'd be game for soccer kicks as well. Sure. Yeah, I think it'd make it even more interesting, make it spicier. And then just last one, can I get your thoughts on the main and coming event for UFC 304? Yeah, obviously, I'm back on the fellow Englishman, goes without saying. Um, I think Leon, I think Bilal's got so much better since the first fight, but I think Leon was on his way to finishing him in that fight and I think he gets a finish and obviously I think Tom's coming for revenge even though that last fight only lasted 20 seconds but Curtis is his toughest test to date mm -hmm. definitely stylistically. Penny, over here. Uh, training at Next Gen MMA with the likes of Luke Riley, Shen Rock, Adam Gunnell and many more. Uh, what is it like training with those monsters in the room and who, who replicated Bobby Green in this camp for you? Um, yeah. 
might span apart as a brilliant, you know what I mean? I don't really have to go anywhere else to get any spars in because I have such a talented lightweight, featherweight and welterweight on the mat. Um, to be honest, Luke has done his, his style absolutely fantastic, lad, when I spar with Luke. He switches, he goes southpaw for me, has his hands down and all that. Like, Luke's a big talent coming through and he's all going to see him real soon. He's going to introduce himself in a big way and that he's phenomenal and he's only young. But also I've got to give a big shout out to Liam Malloy, lad. Liam Malloy, he's only a young pro from our gym. Um, but he's he's a southpaw and he's done a lot of a lot of rounds with me leading up to this and a lot of fight run throughs. And I can't thank him enough as well. And your hair is iconic, but against Tony Ferguson, you decided to do braids. What are you doing this time out? Yeah, I'll be getting cornrows again. Um, it's just, it sways people's minds when I get it with a little punch and my hair goes like that. You know what I mean? As I say, when I watched the Jared Gordon fight back, he was hitting me with little shots and the commentator's like, oh, he's being rocked. You know, it's like, no, it hardly fucking hit me. You know what I mean? But because my hair moves like that, people are like, oh, he's, he's hurt, when I'm not. So from this day forward, I will be getting cornrows. Paddy, can I <coughs> mention the talent there that's um, you know, at Next Gen? You, you've mentioned before that you'd love to fight at Anfield. Is that something you've discussed with anyone at Liverpool or anyone at the UFC? And, and how likely do you think that would be to happen one day? I mean, Anfield's hosting you know, big concerts this summer. I mean, surely UFC would, would be made at home there. Yeah, and I've, I've spoke to people at Anfield about it. Lad. I've spoke to like the COO of the football club and he's, they're all willing to and happy to get it on. You know what I mean? They want to do it. They've said it to me plenty of times. I, I, I sit in the Legends Lounge in the in the Anfield when I go to the game, and like some of the I've been in the boardroom and stuff like that. The where the CEO of the club and that's it, and they want to do it. You know what I mean? So I'd love the UFC to get in contact with them and get it done. Would you wait for a title fight or? No, we don't need to wait for a title fight. Lad. I'll sell that out without the title. It goes without saying. And what, what's in Anfield now, like 60,000 and then seats on the floor, be about 70, 80,000, lad. And I'll just sell that out, I promise you now. Absolutely. And um, your first fight as a father, does that change anything, your mentality going into a fight? Obviously, you're not just doing it for yourself now, and you have, obviously, you've got, you've got kids at home to kind of build their future as well. I mean, does, does that change your mentality at all? Um, yeah, of course, a little bit it does, because it's not just me that I've got to care about now. I've got to put food on the table for my family. And... That's what I'm coming to do, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not going to let Bobby Green take food out my daughter's mouth. I need to win this fight to propel myself to the next level. And that's what I'm going to do. It's, just, it's as simple as that. There's no way he's stopping me from feeding my family. That's so exciting. Paddy, just answer right. In terms of what you said question. before, yeah, no. in just in terms of what you said before, in um, you can't even go to the toilet without um, you know a, st a story being spun. How tiring is it being Paddy? <sighs> It's annoying, like, you know what I mean? Literally, I can't, I can't move, lad, without people saying I've, I'm doing it for a reason or I've done this or I've done that. Like, lad, remember when I knocked on that woman's house because my dog had a shit outside the house? <laughs> lad, people were saying that that was staged. How can I stage my dog having a piss out of his arse, lad? You know what I mean? How, how can I stage that, lad? I can't. You know what I mean? Like, people just love to talk shit about me, lad. And as I said earlier, people love taking things out of context. Like that video the other week, you know what I mean? People just took it completely out of context and made loads of lies up about it. Where if all you've got to do is come and speak to me about it and fact check. And I did, I spoke to a couple of England fans and explained it to them. And they were all like, oh yeah, I understand mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where People just jump on the bandwagon of hate because it's popular to hate on me and to make stuff up about me. So, I'm used to it, lad. It's been happening since I was an amateur at 16, beating people up in a shit all by ours called the Olympia. Anyone else? No? Good? Yep.